yesterday about insurance because I it's been my experience that when people meet run into difficulty, one of the first thing that go is their insurance policy. I've even known people who drive their motor vehicle and they're not paying insurance and on their motor vehicle. And I don't understand how you can be on the streets and drive in a car and you have no insurance. If you need insurance, amen? You, you need insurance and you shouldn't do that. But sometimes people don't see the need for that. And then you have an accident and then somebody said, oh, the insurance is going to take care of that. No, I didn't pay. I didn't have insurance. Why? Well, I didn't have any money to pay. You cannot afford not to do some things. Amen. And here we have our teacher. Amen. But insurance is very important. And one of the things that, that, that the wealthy people do are, according to the teacher yesterday, people who knows about it do they use insurance as like a savings account where they, uh, you have a policy, the policy is going to uh, mature. You can take out those policy. You deposit money into your insurance policy and you also withdraw money from your insurance policy. You transfer it back and forth to your children. Last year we had um, Dr. Lizette came last year and she talked about that, how you can use the insurance policy and you actually can get benefit from it while you are alive because most insurance policy are of benefit when you're dead and sometimes you need to have policies that benefit you while you're alive today we're looking because we're talking about business we want everyone to get on the same page and knowledge is power and the knowledge that you use and the knowledge that you apply that will be power. So we're trying to educate and inform the body of Christ so that when you have this information, you, you can use it and take out a policy for your grandchildren. Take out, you're going to die. We are all going to die. So might as well just put the debt to good use. Because like I said, my, my, what my first pastor was um, the president of Mutual Life in Jamaica. And when he died, all his grandchildren and his wife and children, they did not have to work for the rest of their lives. He set them up with insurance policy. Why? That's how people that are knowledgeable do things and they pass on wealth to the next, the next generation. So I hope that you're learning. And as you get this information, put it to good use. Today we have Kareen here. And Kareen is here to talk to us about the importance of accounts on finance, whether it's to balance your bank book, whether it's to reconcile your credit card statement. Do not assume that because you get your credit card statement, everything on it is from you. Make sure you go to your credit card statement to check if, did I go to Outback Steakhouse and eat? Did I go really go to Kentucky? No, make sure that every charge on your account is actually yours because there are scammers that can make a copy of your card and they can put things on it. So make sure that the, the, um, the, the charges are yours. And when you have a business, whether you're a, um, a hairdresser or a mechanic, keep good books and do good accounting. And Karine is here, very welcome. It's my privilege and honor to introduce Karine to her. I think you're gonna enjoy her. Amen. Karine, it's over to you and welcome to the platform as a presenter. God bless you in Jesus' name. Karine, put on your video. It's over to you now. All right. It looked like she's not. She's not at her device. Yes, she's at her device. All right. We cannot hear you. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Cannot hear. We cannot hear. 
Make sure that when you log in, you log in and say audio. You have it, but we're not hearing you. Can anybody hear her or it's just me? Dr. Monica, her mic is open. It looks like she's having internet trouble. Um, right, that's... because her mic, yeah, her mic is open. I see her mic open, but we cannot hear you. Still cannot hear you. Okay, I'm going to join from my phone because the laptop is not. Right, it, yeah, it's not picking up. Okay, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. No, we lose it again. We lose it again. <clears throat> we lost you again. Okay, I'm shutting down the laptop so I can um Oh uh, yeah, we can hear you now. We hear you now. Okay. You're gone back muted. Now what are you doing? You're gone back muted. I don't know what the see now the phone is doing its own thing because I'm not I didn't touch anything on it. But all right, we're hearing you now. We're hearing now. Go ahead. Yes, right. I'm never one. Um <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to be here today. I give God, you know, give God thanks for the opportunity to do this, you know. We lost you. We lost you. The phone keeps going on and off on the keeps muting itself because um it's all the way over there. And you're not um, touching it. And I'm yeah. not touching it. Yes. So um so um I must extend greetings to all in attendance. First, let me just say it's really a honor and a privilege to be here. And it's um, a honor to, you know, mm -hmm. be a quick Dr. Jones. Um, you know, um, and then to be Invited to do this is really just a Fernanda privilege. And so I'm, you know, taking the time out to just say, well. We just lost you. Move your phone and try to put it somewhere else. These, um, these um, sessions are geared towards, uh, um, towards us as um, the body of Christ. And you know, people in general, so that we can understand much better how to go about um, our daily living. You know, we lost you again. We just lost you. Yeah, the, but the, but the, the the sign comes up across the screen to say the host host muted you. So I don't know. No, no, I'm not doing that. No, the, no, <laughs> the blood of Jesus. I did not mute you. No. Okay. So um. So my, my initial reaction, you know, is that um was a little bit kind of shaky at first, but you know, you know, God has a way to kind of reassure us constantly that you know He has got our backs, and so He reminded me, um, you know, that you know this is one of the things that we ought to be doing as people, um, in the kingdom to empower each other, so that I mean the kingdom can be built up. Just and a minute, Karen. Can you move your face? We're seeing just from your chin upward, right? Better. All right. Oh, you're Jordan. Okay, you are Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. We're seeing you good now. Good now. On my phone, I'm Jordan. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. So um, so okay. So the Bible says um, you know, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, and we see in the book of Job um, that you know in Job chapter one, where the Bible says that um, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. Where the Bible says that um, we see we saw a calling together of the sons of God in a fashion like a board meeting, and you know um, the Bible says that um, in chapter two it started out by saying, and again there was a day when the sons of God were gathered together, and um, so it, you know it it it, um, it it implies that you know this is an occurrence that takes place um, in sequences of time and frequencies of time. Um, where in similar ways that governments and organizations come together to be held accountable for, um, for whatever it is they carry on and their functions, functions in the organization. They come to discuss the way forward and um, just to see how best with all the factors that are available and um, in, in the current economic lands, landscape, um, how they will 
maintain profitability and relevance, you know, um, going forward. And so this mention in Job, certainly another part of the Bible, tells us that men copied God's model. And so yet we see in the church and um, Dr. Jones um, alluded to it yesterday, um, where the church shies away from many areas and many fields because they think that it is not for the church or the church shouldn't be involved in certain areas. And it is to our demise because then the world go about and bask in the substance of who our God is. And certainly, you know, we should think um, that the maker and creator of all things has the deposit of knowledge of all things within himself. And that's how things were created because all of it was within him. And so when he said, let there be, and there was, he really spoke these things out of himself. And so today, the content that we cover here, we must consider to be a part of the, a part of the knowledge of who God is and the kind of and the, the knowledge that he has extended to mankind so that we can benefit from the abundance of what he has given unto us. And so to ensure that um, no one is left behind, I started from scratch. I started out by asking persons what it is they would want to know. Um, you know, if someone was to talk to them about accounts and finance. And so um, one person answered out of quite a few. And so um, based on that, I just went to God himself and I decided from that um, to just start from the beginning, start from scratch so that nobody's left behind because I'm not sure who the audience is or you know um, how the audience is made up. And so to start from scratch, I'm just making sure that nobody's left behind. And so accounts and accounting basically, they are normally used interchangeably. Um, however, they are not the same as accounting is a process of recording of financial transactions, which includes the sorting, the storing, the retrieving, the summarizing, and presenting the results of business activities in various reports and analysis. Accounting is usually a field. Accounting is also a field of study. It's a profession dedicated to carrying out those tasks previously mentioned. While accounts in itself now, is it refers to the specific record within a company's financial ledger or balance sheet. Accountants, finance experts, and bookkeepers use accounts to record important financial information, um, whatever the daily transactions um, they, they perform or they, or they do in the company um, on a daily basis, um, and the exact money amount um, of those transactions, the financial amount of those transactions. In other words, accounting means accounting is one means by which the business um, keep um, business managers are kept accountable. Sorry, for their stewardship in the business, they are charged to manage. So there are very many types of accounts that used to, that are used to keep track of financial information and current and the current value of the organization. And there are five main categories of accounts that are kept by a business, and they include asset, asset account, expense account, income accounts, liability accounts, and equity accounts. And these accounts are used for different purposes and maintained on the financial ledger or balance sheet. Now, I talk about companies, but this, all of this um, that I've said about companies can be adapted for individual use. So we're... In, in saying that, we must bear in mind that we must keep track of our net worth. And, how, and, and what does that mean? In the same manner that companies do it, we can do it. So if we do this, we would have armed ourselves um, with the tool to make better financial decisions that will lead to prosperity in our personal finances. Um, this will set godly examples also for our descendants and is aligned with scriptures. In Proverbs 13, 22, the Bible says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And so, you know, if we're going to leave that inheritance for our children's children, it means, therefore, we would have attained a certain level of success. It doesn't have to be just, oftentimes I hear people talk about this and they talk about it in terms of, um, in terms of um, the wealth of spiritual knowledge and et cetera, et cetera. But all gifts come from God, comes from God. 
And so why should we just leave our spiritual, why should, just we, should we just seek to leave our spiritual endowments to our children? It's important, it's most important. But likewise, we want to leave something behind also so that they can enjoy um, some of what God is. And so types of accounting, there are many types of accounting. And the major arms of accounting are financial accounting, cost accounting, or cost and management accounting. And more recently, there's forensic accounting. We won't go, in, we won't go through these in details um, because of in the interest of time, right? But there are also extensions like um, advising on accounting systems, income tax planning, advising and reporting, auditing and financial statement, auditing of financial statements and providing general business advice, financial planning for individuals also. And so those are just basically major arms of accounting or areas of accounting or fields um, that are associated with the accounting function. So how is accounting used and how it benefits us? And as we said before, it's a, um, it's a, it's a very important function that brings to light financial health of a business. And it is used both internally and externally. The um, accounting in itself, the function, the results of accounting and the financial statements, which comprise of the balance sheet, the income statement and the cash flow statements, they're all used internally and externally for various decision-making purposes. And they, they include um, compliance with statutory requirements, ascertainment of profit and loss of the business, ascertainment of the financial position of the business, tax assessment, support investment decision used by lenders is used for decision-making in the organization itself um, also. And these principles, if we apply them when, um, in our own financial planning, we use them in similar ways and apply them to our own financial planning. So if we do that, then we will know our, our financial position. So we'll know whether or not we can afford to take a loan. The lenders will also know, um, yeah, they normally just use our, um, use our they will use our, our, our pay slip. But so often I find that the information and the pay slip and what they are told Sometimes we're so desperate for a loan, we tell them we leave off some of the information, we leave off some of the expenses. But we all, to our own selves, we need to be true. And so we need to be true to the extent that we must be honest enough to, um, if we keep these kind of ledgers and we keep this kind of information and keep track of our finances, then we will know whether we really can afford a loan or not, to our, you know, whether we should go some other route to meet the um, whatever need it is that we think, um, or that comes up, that, that we need to, that, that financing for. And so there are some key metrics to observe from financial statements. And note that all of them are not applicable to individuals. They, they can be, some can be, but not all of them can be applied to individuals. And so we have the liquid ratios, the asset management or asset turnover ratios, we have the debt ratios, we have the profitability ratio, and we have market ratios. Now, I'll just go through, I'll go through them, but um, not, as I said before, not all of them are applicable to individuals. And so those that are not applicable to, to individuals, um, you know, you will see as you go along. So liquid ratios. Liquid ratios are those ratios that um, measure the avail availability of cash within an organization to service its short-term liabilities when they fall due, all right? And they are the result of dividing, um, there is a result of dividing cash flow plus other liquid assets by short-term borrowings and current liabilities and show the number of short-term, and show the number of times the short-term obligations are covered by cash or other liquid assets. And some liquid ratios are the current ratio or working capital, the cash ratio or acid test ratio. Um, individuals like businesses should always strive to keep some cash or near cash on hand for emergencies or other reasons. Um, near cash is, um, is just basically things that can be easily converted to cash. And so while we know that, I mean, especially in the current financial 
um, situation that um, we find ourselves in from time to time. Sometimes it's difficult. But if we, but, but, well, I don't want to um, jump ahead of myself. And so let me just leave it, leave it there for now. All right. I know sometimes it's difficult to keep cash on hand and sometimes, you know, it is, it is sticky and I mean, we don't always um, um, have the wherewithal to, to say, but it's something that we should endeavor to do. And then we have the asset management or turnover ratios. And they compare a company's assets to its turnover. Turnover is sales, right? And um, it's an indication of how successful a company uses its assets to generate revenues or sales. All right, we don't, and then um, high has a turnover. High has a turnover ratios are desirable because they indicate that the company is using its assets efficiently to produce sales. Now, while it does not directly apply to individuals, it can be extrapolated. And we'll be surprised to know, all right, that it can be um, um, extrapolated to individuals because we do have assets. Um, we, we have intangible assets. Um, we have our skills, we have education, we have giftings, whatever things that we're capable of doing that we can use, we can ask ourselves a question, how can I monetize this skill? It's, it's really an asset because we can monetize it, right? And so we can monetize it so that we can improve ourselves and the kingdom. And it's not just about money sometimes. Sometimes it's just um, service that we provide to the body of Christ itself. Someone, um, someone told me some, um, recently that church people expect everything to be free. And while um, we know that we can't give away everything for free, you know, I also believe that from time to time, there are some stuff that we can do pro bono, you know? And so I'm always um, one that um, always like extend myself to help others in the kingdom. So, uh, from that, now we come to the very important and I think most important ratio that is applicable to not just business, but to us as individuals is the debt ratios, otherwise called the financial leverage ratios. And it measures the ability to meet a company's or a person's ability to meet its financial obligations as they fall due. They indicate the ability to repay the principal amount of a debt, pay interest on the borrowings, and meet other financial obligations. They provide insight into the mix of equity and debt that a company uses. Now, equity is the amount of your own money. All right? So we can, um, equity is the amount of your own money. In a company, the equity might not necessarily be in cash form at a particular point in time, but for us, our equity can jolly well be um, um, cash. Equity, if we start, we're starting a business, can be the skill that we have. Um, they call it sweat equity, right? And some examples of debt ratios are debt to equity ratio and debt, debt to um, earnings before interest tax, depreciation and amortization ratio, right? And so it's, in, it's extremely important for us to for us as individuals to know um, the extent to which we are leveled or the extent of indebtedness that we have. And so we need to be, because we need to be careful that we do not, we're not so consumed with repaying debts that our, our, our labor seem to be in vain, right? Because if, if, if we're just working to pay debts, then each week, each fortnight, each month, you get your pay, it goes back out in debts. You're not going to be motivated to work at all, even though you're the one that used that, that debt that you have. You are the one that used the money for some past purpose. You know, sometimes um, persons get into that um, situation. I remember working in a payroll department some years ago where there are some persons who took home zero pay because everything went, went out in debt. So if they didn't have someone else that could help to manage the responsibilities that um, come up in the home, then trust me, they would be in serious problems. There are persons who got in such positions to the point where every week, every fortnight, every month, they had to be taking a, an advance of the next month's salary so that they can get by in the current month. And so we have to be very careful, all right? And so oftentimes, to my children that in the same way that companies 
um, you, you, look, you look and you evaluate the company's um, position um, through its debt ratios. It's the same thing that um, we can do for our own selves as people because, you know, um, my opinion is that any, any person who that is so far, far outweigh their income and any amount of savings that they have, I believe that, I mean, you're bankrupt. So that's what I tell them all the time. So you must always have some kind of savings that, you know, you can help them. So dig yourself out of a position if you're in such an, if you're in, in an awkward position. And then we have- um, the One minute here, because you know that um, here you have what I call the payday loans, yes. where people will go and they borrow against their salary before they even get the salary. And you see it's being advertised on TV and Scott, and it is so pretty and so colorful and so nice. But people, I mean, why in the world would you go to a am Scott and, and, and borrow money and pay in these high interests? And before your check come in, you have to take it to am Scott and, and, and they make it look so desirable and it's not desirable. No, it's not. It's not, it's not, it's not, not desirable. Because the interest rate is too high. And like it says, you are you are just um working for Amscot to pay yeah. that Amscot. And 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 a little bit better could be a little bit better than that is the credit card that mm -hmm. they want the children to have a credit card. My seven-year-old needs to tell me, oh, well, I'm gonna get a credit card for my birthday and I'm gonna <laughs> use it shopping to buy to buy food. I said, buy what food? I say if you have to use a credit card to buy a meal, you're not hungry. Mm -hmm. a loan. You're taking out a loan to eat, a loan to buy gas, and a loan to do this, and a loan to do that. And if you have to take out a loan to do things, then the interest is too high. The interest is too high because you can use credit card to your benefit, but you have to know how to yeah. use the credit card to your benefit, but not to buy food or gas or, mm -hmm. or to go shopping. I mean, I mean, persons can have credit cards to, 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 to do daily things, you know, but um, you have to know that it is going to help or you're going to pay it back within that period. So it doesn't within the period of time. Period of time. Yes. Um, one of my general rules is that I don't borrow for consumption. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So food I need, trust me, I'm going to die for hunger. Exactly. I'm going to die for hungry if I have to, if I have to uh, use a credit card to get food. Uh, then I'm going to be on fasting. Yes. Right. And so um, the profitability ratios now, um, they measure a company's ability to generate earnings relative to sales, assets, and equity. And these ratios, these, these, ra um, these ratios assess a company's ability to generate earnings, profits, and cash, and cash flows relative to some metric, often the sum of money invested and the highlights how profitable and effectively the company is being managed. And some examples of um, profitability ratios are return on investment, return on capital, and return on capital employed. Then you have market ratios, which are really just um, ratios that help quantify the response of investors on owning, on, on owning and the cost of issuing and the cost of issuing stock of a company. Some market ratios include price to earnings ratio, price to book ratios, all right? And so that covers it. That covers the, um, the, the accounting aspect of it. And so the other part of what we are here to address today is finance. Now finance, um, really, um, it's kind of my, uh, the favorite, um, more favored than the, than the accounting part of, um, of, of today's um, presentation. And it's really just the management of money. That's what finance really is. If you ever ask yourself what is finance, finance is the management of money. And um, the activities entailed in finance are um, um, activities such as forecasting, budgeting, saving, investing, lending, and borrowing. And these activities are important to people, to corporations, to governments, and hence there are three branches or types of finance. And they are personal finance, corporate finance, and government or public finance. All right, and so um, each section will be discussed. Um, will be discussed, um, and if I'm if I find I'm going to um, I'm going to over go, go over in time, then I will leave off some stuff, right? And so, 
And so this is a term which means to, to fund an undertaking or to, you know, to fund an undertaking. It's the simplest way I think I can put it. And we can, uh, for example, we can ask our friend, how do you plan to finance a project? For example, you're going to build a house. How did someone can ask you, how do you plan to finance it? It's, in this case, it's not the function of managing money. In, in a sense, it is, but it's, it's in essence asking, where are you going to get the money from? How are you going to, where, where are you going to get, get the money from to fund this project or to, or, to, or to do this particular activity that you're planning or to go on a trip or whatever? How do you, you plan to finance this? And the particular question could be answered using more one or more of the, the, the things that I mentioned above. You can forecast from your salary. You can budget um, to fund it. You can save towards it. You can save and then invest, um, or you can borrow to fund your project. Right? And so it's really money, how you manage money. And we see in the Bible in First Kings nine verse ten. I figure since you know, um, oftentimes persons think that some God does God is not concerned about some stuff. In this in this part of it, I did jot down um, a scripture for most of the areas that I could find um, that I, I knew of one that was relevant. So in 1 Kings 9, verse 10, um, into 1 for, um, for Kings 11, up to verse 43, we saw where Solomon was building, was building up um, Israel and he financed that, those projects. And it was many, many years of projects um, by the supply of cedars. One of the way he got, it was a supply of cedars and Cyprus, you know, Cyprus is also a tree, and gold from Hiram, the king of Tyre. And in, the, in exchange, the deal was that in exchange, he should have given Hiram some, some cities in exchange for him supplying <laughs> um, those materials. And of course, if you know the story well, you would realize that Solomon gave him some, what Hiram called, um, or Hiram considered to be wishy-washy. You know, he wasn't satisfied with the gift, um, with, with what he got in exchange for his prized cedars and the cypress and gold. And so when I observed that, and, and, and plus when I read the book of Proverbs, I realized Solomon was one shrewd businessman, very shrewd and crabby and sharp, you know, and I mean, I, I blame Hiram still because if he had made a deal and told Solomon exactly what he wanted in exchange, then Solomon couldn't have just unilaterally just given him what he wanted. And when you look at it too, um, when I observe and I see how Solomon was treated and you know, who would come to him, what I gather from that is Solomon was also the, the possibly, I don't know if there was any before him, but he, I think of him as the world's first international consultant. He was consultant, I think. I, I didn't think the kings came and gave him money just because he was, he was wise. Yes, because he was wise, they would come to him but they came to him for advice. And so that's why he got all the gifts and all the this and the that. And that is why Hiram or Hiram would have entered this agreement with him. So the information- Karen, Karen, is this also true today that money attract money? Yes. Money. People with money are attracted to other people with money because like the Queen of Sheba, when she left Ethiopia or Arabia, that was- Saudi Arabia at that time was part of Ethiopia. When she left to come to visit him, she already come with the gold and the cinnamon and the spices and the cardamom and the and, and all those saffron. She already came with, listen, if somebody give you a million dollars, I'm coming up with two or three, but everybody rolling up to say, yeah. I'm coming to give you even a better gift than what you get from this one and that one. So money attract money. Yes, and, and, and even saying so, you know, even today you find that persons, um, um, the, for example, someone will go to a hotel and they're already rich. Yeah. You know, and, but yet the, the, um, the, the hotel manager put them up for free. Exactly, <laughs> and, they, and they have the money to pay. Yes, and, 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 and they get the best designer clothes for free. Yeah. Why? Because of their status. Yeah. Us, then you know they can say oh you know i mean um michael jordan wore this or you know um, um liz taylor wore this or or j lo wore this you know j lo i mean where's where's my designs and so on and so forth and so they get it for free um and so yes that's true too and so um so by no stretch of the imagination what 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 we talk about here um is conclusive you know and so um, feel free to 
to extrapolate, feel free to, 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 to apply whatever it is we talk about. Feel free to go and do further research and, you know, enlighten yourself. Um, and come and enlighten us too, you know. So forecasting, another um, one of the areas um, of finance. It is a predicting of future outcomes based on historical, current, and probable data. It can be used by individuals, corporations, or government to estimate earnings, cost, and other financial outcomes. It is a tool used to make informed decisions, um, the timing of trades, when you buy things. For example, now in the housing market here, um, it's, not, it's not necessarily the best time to buy a house for two reasons. One, the prices are still high and the interest rates have gone way oh. high. And so that's, a, that, that, that's one way of where you can apply timing of trades because um, so, so we're you're forecasting, okay, so based on what is happening and um, you can always extrapolate whatever is happening um, com, um, compared to your salary, compared to what the deduction is gonna be or the, or the payment is gonna be, how you go up and you go up. Mm -hmm. And trend, planning and making budgets. And that's another sore point in the kingdom as well, budget. Budget, we'll talk, budget, yeah. We'll talk about that later. Sorry. And so the use of financial statements, such as balance sheets, income statements, and cash flow statements um, is, uh, is used in finance. And so while there are two separate and different um, fields, they, are, they support each other. One cannot exist without the other. Um, so it must be pointed out that these documents are not used in isolation either, because there must be application of economic knowledge, economic data, interest rates, um, inflation, employment rate, the consumer price index, which, which, um, which feeds the interest rates, as well as the producer price index. The, those both feed, the in, feed into, um, sorry, inflation, sorry, right? And... Um, and we must know how they interrelate, how they affect each other in order to, help to, um, to do very good forecasting. So this is applicable, say, like for the sole trader, the hairdresser, the mechanic, even the sole proprietor or have your little own business going. You need to know these things. When yes. to expand, when, when to open the, the second branch, because sometimes you have a person with a beauty salon or a restaurant here and they're doing very well and they say oh we're doing very well over here let's go open another one over there and they went over there and they when don't do well when to borrow the money and borrow the money to open the, the second one and the second one was a flop because they didn't do proper proper research sure. to know right uh -huh. and forecasting to say listen the, the rates are going up i tell people right now if you have your home keep it don't sell your home. This is not a time to sell your house. Because if you sell it, where are you going to live? You cannot buy another one after you sell that house unless you're going to move into a different area or a region where you know you can actually buy a house for cash. Because interest rate and everything is going up. And you have to look at cost of living and cost of living have gone up. They used to be like you could get here at some supermarkets. Four eggs for a dollar. That would be 25 cents a dozen for an egg. I have not seen that price. I mean, I remember one time going into Walmart and seeing eggs for like $5 something a dozen. And I just stood there and laughed. I said, where are the four eggs for a dollar? You know, so, so you have to take all those things in consideration. So it's not just the business must do it. You must look at your, your, your hairdressing business, your gardening business, your your what whatever it is that you may say well i'm not a big business if you're working for yourself you should keep check and balances this is how much i made this is what my debts are and this is how much i get to keep for myself in the very simplest terms and okay. keep a track of your money you're basically going over into budgeting now yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that forecast that forecasting now can be used um yeah, um, even your part, the things you want to do personally. I remember some years ago, um, I was building, and um, at the time, I didn't really, have, I didn't really have a choice. I ended up purchasing steel for a hundred and odd thousand dollars per ton because I had to, based on where I was in, um, based on where I was in the construction process, and mm -hmm. also NHT loan, and you know you have to do it within a particular time. And so I ended up buying a ton of steel for a hundred and odd thousand dollars. Um, a few months down the road. 
still went back to seventy and eighty thousand dollars a ton. If I didn't have to do it at that time, you would have I, saved some money. I would have saved some money. Yes. It's not just about um. It's not, it's not just about um if you're doing a business, but also in your personal life. Personal you life. Asked. Um, if you have children going to school, you can forecast to say yesterday we spoke about insurance. You can forecast okay if I invest ten dollars per month at X rate by the time this whatever year old child gets to a certain age to go to college, then the money should be enough to pay the college fee on the assumption that um, college fees go up by X percent. So that is um, another forecasting. And they do that also when they're selling these, selling these plans. All right, then budgeting another sore point for, for individuals because we don't budget. I don't necessarily budget per se, go down and do a strict thing, but I have spreadsheets that I set up. So I have a timing for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have a timing for everything. And I remember some years ago, um, um, when I was back, um, I remember my husband had come up and things were a little bit sticky. And um, I didn't have a lot of money to be spending. And I hated going to the supermarket every day. I hated to go to, 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 go to the shop and buy a little this and, and a little that. And so in budgeting, what I did was say, okay, then I sat down and I thought about it. And I said, okay, if I buy a case of rice, and this case of rice will serve me for argument two months. So I buy a case of rice this month because I can afford a case of rice and possibly a jug of oil. So for the next two months or so, I don't have to buy those things. Next month or, or, or whatever, whatever next period I go to buy again, I don't have to buy those in bulk. So I buy something else in bulk. What that does for me is that it cuts down my unit, my unit cost. It also saves on my gas and the time that I take to go to the supermarket. So I'm, so I'm saving and cutting back. But it's, it's, so it's forecasting as well as budgeting rolled up in one. And they do work together. Yeah. Right? So, it, so, so, you know, it's, I mean, it's about how you... It's, it, first, you have to sit and think about the things that you have to do. And so let's just talk about the budgeting now from, um, so that I don't forget <laughs> the points that I made, I made here. It's it, it, but, and why is budget important? It is important because resources are limited, right? So in the aspect of personal finance, um, it's an aspect of personal finance, as we said before, that is not widely practiced. And so it, it's a process by which organizations, individuals, and governments allocate their incomes and we budget because resources are limited resources are not in abundance they are not endless so we budget capital and other resources we so we do it to, to allocate um our income capital and other resources efficiently and effectively so we want to put it to the best possible use right and we want to make sure that we get more for less so it is a financial plan for a specific period of for a specific period of time whether at that time be a week, a month, a year, a number of years, or for even the term of a project. And so people who live by a budget are more than are more often than not prepared for life's um, eventualities and are better able to meet their various financial obligations without stress. They are able to take vacations, they're able to treat themselves, you know, they're able to buy um, you know, whatever it is at whatever point in time because they have budgeted and um, made these plans to make sure that when the time comes, they can take care of some stuff. And so they're important um, for us all, government, organizations, individuals, so that we can live and operate successfully. So they are based on assumptions and estimations of future income. Dr. Jones and I just went through a little example of it um, for, um, for, for us, right? Um, they can be flexible, budgets can be flexible, or they can be static. You can make them as surplus budgets, you can have a balanced budget, or you can have a deficit budget. And so you have changes in relevant factors. Um, there are changes in relevant factors like economic factors um, or, or, or hurricane, whatever it is, whatever eventuality, they can cause changes in the budget. And so therefore the assumptions that you put in would now have been different and so now you, those now would cause the budget to become inappropriate or, in, um, or, 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 not, or not effective based on the eventualities or whatever changes there are in your assumptions. As your budgets are usually, so the personal budgets, sorry, are usually static um, and they keep constant without adjustment over the entire budgeting period um, more often than not. 
while flexible budgets change and can adapt to the changing variables and is usually created by corporations and designed to move along with the changing industry indicators with sales level with production levels as well as other internal and external factors. A budget is considered a surplus budget, a balanced budget or deficit, or deficit budget, depending on the relationship that exists between income and expenditure. All right, so surplus budget, as it is said, um, I think we, we, we can understand that is where your, ex, your, where your, your, where your income exceeds your expenditure in any given period of time. Um, a balanced budget is where the income and expenditure are, are equal, and the deficit budget is when your expenditure is more than your income. Now, governments have, well, before I even get into the governments, let us talk about us. We want to have surplus budgets. I know it's difficult because most oftentimes our incomes are fixed. And so sometimes life you know, gets a little bit sticky and challenging. So we understand that sometimes income is not enough to do all the things that we want to do. And so there are, we have to find creative ways as members of the body of Christ, not just to earn, but also to spend. And I believe there's, there's a wealth of um, um, ways that these things can be done. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. There's a part in the Bible that speaks about witty inventions. I think that there's so much in God and so much that I mean God can deposit in us, um, you know, to, to really help us to see how best we can leverage some of the things that he has deposited in us. And if we work together, I find too that as a body, people of God don't work together. Um, and that is one, and I think that's our greatest downfall. We don't help each other um, as much as we should. Or sometimes, not necessarily say as much as we should, but sometimes as much as we can. Yes. Yeah. Because if you know something that works, you hide it for yourself. And you're getting over here. Like there are some, because we're on budget, you know, and you know a lot of people don't budget. But there are some things you can do, like in the example you were given before, you could have a Sam's card and buy wholesale, right? And try to get the things um, in bulk. Or you can buy some things at the dollar store. I buy, I love to buy cleaning supplies at the dollar store, right? And, and I like to go to another place to go get my vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. There is a flea market near me, right? And there are these people there, I will not call their names, but they get stuff from Whole Foods. Whole Foods. And I think they're supposed to give it away, but they're not giving it away, they sell it. But I go there and get my organic old food stuff <laughs> yeah. for very cheap. So you and I may have the same thing, but I'm not paying what you're paying because I'm not going to whole food to buy. I'm waiting until they get it at the yeah. at the flea market. So because if I go to to say Publix, I'm gonna get like quinoa for like eight fifty, and I'm gonna go to this flea market and I'm gonna get the same quinoa two for five dollars. <laughs> Because they're supposed to give it away, but they're selling it. And I know they're not supposed to do that, but that's how I get organic stuff. So you shop around and get different things and you can plant some things. You can plant yeah. a tomato and, and your bell peppers. And, and, and when they get old, you, you, you can find ways to cut down on the money and to make the money stretch. I remember when I, when I wanted watch, like say, for example, if I wanted an expensive watch to buy. And I'm cheap. I'm not going to buy it at the price they, um, they have it for, but I, I want it. So I would wait until JC Penny have a sale and they have a sale and watch, all right? So the, if, if the watch is, say, six dollars $700, I'm going to wait until the watch is on 40% sale. Then they have an early bird sale if you go between 9 and... Nine and 12, you get an additional 15%. That means I'm up to 55%. And then it gives you a sale that if you buy over 100, then you're going to get another 10%. So when you add 40 and 15 and 10, I'm getting that watch for 65%. And that's how I would buy the expensive watch when they have 
a sale, but I'm not going to go in there and just buy the watch like that. So you and I may have the same watch, but I'm not, I'm not paying, I'm not paying the full price for it. I'm not paying the full price. It's the same way with a car. It's the same way with a car. If you buy a 2023 car in 2023, you're going to pay the full price for the car. But you buy the 2023 car in 2024 because not every car is going to be sold. Not every car is going to be sold in that year. But when you buy it in the next year, it already depreciates by 20% because automobile go by 20%. So when you buy it in that year now, it's an old car because it's the previous year car. And the insurance is less. And yeah. people test drive it around the lot so it has some mileage on it. So you get it for less. In you fact, understand? In fact, you know, um, um, I, I, I love to read about <clears throat> successful people. And one of my favorite persons to read about is Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. And Warren Buffett never buys a brand new car. Mm -hmm. um, um, based on the article I read, he, buy, he buys hail damaged cars. So when the cars are out there in the lot and, you know, um, he lives in um, Omaha. And so hair will fall and damages the car. That's how he buys a new car. And his daughter says that she's not the one who has to put and say, Daddy, you need a new car. You don't, you're going to wait until it breaks down, break down on the road. Mm -hmm. And this is a man who, from time to time, he switches places as, a, um, as the richest man in the world. He still lives in the same house that he did from in 1952. He says nothing is wrong with it. He has made ad additions to it. But he says, I mean, if he was more comfortable somewhere else, he would have gone there. Yeah. And so read about these people and to see how they, how they have lived, how they did it. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And there's wisdom in what they do. There's nothing wrong with following what they do. That's and it's, I find a lot of what he does aligns with the Bible. I don't know if he, if he reads the Bible, but I find a lot of what he does Aligned with what the word of God is. And then he give away millions and millions and yeah. every year and yeah. get his friends to, to join him in saying every year, because Bill Gates joined him, that you're going to give away what 80 or 90 percent of all the wealth that he have accumulated through Berkshire Hathaway. And Berkshire Hathaway is the premier real estate company and business investment and take over and all of that and he acquired his money and now he's spending his lifetime giving it away giving it away and so um um and, and i know time is, is going on us now so we're going to talk about yeah. personal budgets so personal budget help individuals and families determine how to spend their income to fulfill their daily needs and wants while maintaining financial health that is what a budget does. Help you to navigate the waters. And sometimes I know what gets, what, what gets us is, is anxiety. We want the thing, but we want it now. No. That's the reason why we get into the issues of the loans and the debts. And, and then it creates this, um, this, the, the, this, the, this tunnel or the cycle, you know? And so most often than not, I think we get, um, we get um, anxious. And um, because we, um, because of that, we get into problems, we get into debt issues, and so on. And budgets vary for individuals, and there's no unified standard. The factors that impact personal budget include the average cost of living, wherever that is, you, wherever it is you live, and the average cost of living um, is impacted by inflation and interest rates, your income level, your lifestyle, and your personal preferences. So. Your income, three persons' income are normally divided among food, transportation, utilities, savings, your giving, and entertainment. And um, of course, there are various um, models out there that um, apportion the apportion the income um, by certain percentages. But for me, um, I think um, um, for me, I think that um, all right, let me um, let me move on to that. To see where it is, I put it there because I want. I don't. I don't want to. And so, since individuals' um, needs and circumstances are different, my personal belief is that um, personal finance is exactly that. It's personal, and so I believe individuals should, um, because of your variable, various um, situations, and um, our individual, then an individual budget should be done. 
um, based on the individual's personal circumstance and situation. And when that is done, when it is done in, the, in that way, then you would have maximized individual benefit. So yes, it's good to go along the ratios. The good, ratios are good guides, but you none of us might necessarily be able to, or not all of us might be able to fit into any of these ratios. And so there might, there might be that individual or whatever it is, portion of individuals that might not be able to fit into these various ratios. For example, there's one that says that you spend 30% on housing, 25% on food, 15 on utilities, 15 on savings, 15 on transportation and 10 on entertainment. Chances are persons um, circumstances are different. Supposing you can pool with someone and you live with someone else. So your housing cost might not necessarily be 30%, it can be something else. And so personal finance is just that. And so I think it should be done on an individual basis. So while the guys are there and they are good, then, you know, um, it must be individually done. And there's nothing wrong with getting help from persons who have the knowledge um, and experience in doing so. Um, so we can always do that. So an example, can you give us a quick example, because we're almost out of time, of a budget, just a generic budget, just a quick guideline of a generic budget? Well, um, I, I just did a generic budget. Um, no, I, no not, not with the ratio, not with the ratio. I'm okay. talking like, say, for example, you have income would be like salary. And if you have two jobs, you would say, OK, regular job, then your part time job, total income. And then on the other side, it would be rent or mortgage, car insurance, car payment, mm -hmm. cell phone, and what other people will have. Gas. Part, part of it, utilities. Yes, food, utilities, cable. And then you would have like what? Tides. Well, if you're a Christian, you would have to have tides up there that you have to pay. You have to have that, that you pay your tides. And if you have children, you're going to have to have um school fees or whatever you have to pay or money for them to go to school. And when you tally that, you want to have hopefully a surplus or, or, or at best be a balance. balanced. A balance. That, that what you make, you, you can survive. You are just above, your head is just above the water. But if you're earning $2,000 and your budget is 3,500 and there is no way you can skim anything off because you have already skimmed is either you have to change your job or you have to get rid of some of the things that you think are essential and they may not be essential because it may not be essential for you to get mani pedi and the, the, the eyelash and all of that every week because to some people those are necessities <laughs> so you may have to take those off and put them as a luxury but for some persons, tweets are part. Of, um, they have to look a particular way to go to their work. So to go to their work. So, <laughs> so, so drop the gun. I'll, um, in the budgeting, about two verse two, the Lord says in the Bible here that we must write the vision and make it make plain. It plain. It, that He may run that readeth it. Ooh, right. It. Yeah. And, and, and here now it says, we, we said that budget is for a particular period. Here he says in verse three, that for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Time and though it tarry. At the end, it shall speak, it shall not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So that is an, a scripture that is applicable to budgets. Right. And, um, you know, and savings. Um, we're almost out of time. We all know what savings are. You know, you put away something um, for a rainy day or you put away something so that you can invest with it. You know, and Proverbs 30, 24 to 25, there are four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are people not strong. They prepare their meat in the summer. They prepare their meat in the summer for a rainy day. Investing, my favorite part. We don't have time to get into the details. No, but we're going to do invest in the next time because Kareem had an idea, but in the next time you can throw out your ideas and see who among us on the line that we can get in it. There is prayer meeting at that goes up close to when we start. So the numbers have dropped off a bit, but we can still say if we can put the idea out there for the investment idea that you shared with me and to see who may be interested in doing some some investment in all right the scripture about write the vision make it plain and and put it that's a book of chapter two 
That's a buckle two. Subtract two, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, chapter two, verses two. So with that, then um, let me stop right there then, because it's two minutes after four. <laughs> All right, she thinks she wouldn't be able to do it, but I know she has a lot more to give because she's not, this is her field of expertise but this is good for all of us whether you're a person who wants to even buy a house you have to sit down and save the money towards the house because once upon a time it used to be easy to get a house but when they did the reform for the for the housing market they're now requiring that you have at least three months payment set aside in savings to pay your mortgage and that you must put down, I think now 20% of the house. And when I bought my house, it was zero down payment. <laughs> but now you have to put down 20%. So you have to, 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 to evaluate, like she was saying, rent own, rent own. Because if you're paying 2000, like right now in South Florida, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. A relative of mine was living in a, a one bedroom apartment and paying um, $1,600 and they increased the rent to, to um, $2,000 for a, a, a single bedroom apartment. And how can you as, as a young person work and save money to have a future and you're paying $2,000 for rent? Then you're talking about utilities and then he has to eat. And then what is there left to save? So right now he has nowhere. He's catching with one of us trying to figure out what am I going to do? But that's how the market is in Florida right now. And ever since COVID, when Florida was one of those states that did not require people to, um, to vaccinate, People came in from all over and they were just buying up anything they could see and they were pushing up the rent so sky high. So you have to evaluate rent or, or, or get a mortgage. And next thing to it, so much saying that um, church people don't work together. We have skills in the church, you know. Yeah. And so what if um, church people could find a way, put the little bit that we have, buy some land and we build a community? It, it's much cheaper because we um, because we then um, we don't have to pay that markup that these um, that these developers put on the put on the property. After yeah, the Muslim do does it, but like you said, you know, Christian people that not going to work, but the Muslims do that. They will yeah. get together, or even somebody was telling me that they were living in New York, and he says, "This is how the the Greeks and they would buy out a neighborhood, right?" The and the Jews and the Jews do it. They buy one person by a brownstone and then a family live there. Then the brother come and live in there with their family and the sister. And so you will have four families living on top of each other. So next thing you know, they save together and they buy the apartment next door. And then they save together and they buy the next apartment. And next thing you know, they own the entire building collectively they put their monies together and buy an apartment now if you are jamaican and you buy an apartment and i come to rent from you you're gonna treat me like a dog because no you know this is my house and 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 this is my place and and now i am a dog and you're gonna treat me the worst kind of way because you have now arrived because you own you own the building and that is the problem and so we do now work together collectively, like you said, to get, because even from Africa, when one person is not able to afford something on their own, you go and you start what is called a partner. And that's how everybody pulled the money together. My sister have a partner and people will, when they get their partner draw, she would have to sign for them. That's the down payment on a house or that's the down payment on that's the school fee for their child in university. And that's how they're sending their child to university by showing the partner. But some people are, they just won't cooperate because I find a way. When I was buying my house, my brother have a friend and that friend was buying, um, what to call it? The, I forgot what you call it, the 
the houses that you need to fix up, fix the upper, fix the upper houses. And I said to him, just send me, says, just let me look at your list of your fixer upper. And if you see a fixer upper and that is not something that you're going to buy for yourself and fix it up, can you then just put me onto that house? And then I would buy that house and take my time and fix it up so I wouldn't have to have a big mortgage. I hate to owe money. And that guy never get back to me. He wanted to buy a house, fix it up, and, and then, then sell it to me. And he would never show me. One of the most selfish, when I tell you, another nation would say, okay, I don't want this one to take a try at it. Take a stab at it. He wouldn't do it. And that's how they are. And that's why we're not getting forward as a group. And that's why the Arabs are going through the community and they're buying up every property that they see. And, and, and then they're building these mosques and everything and, and setting up in our communities because they cooperate with each other and we're not cooperating to help another person. Because we could do this. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So next time we're going to, um, there's a lot of comments. You can read some of the comments and they're, they're agreeing with some of the things this we said. But the, the, the knowledge is there. The knowledge is there. It's just that the willpower is not there because some people are, are very, very selfish. And a lot of, 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 of um, ethnic groups, they work together and they get um, community wealth. But it, it's a hard thing to get the Black community to come together and generate Black wealth because if I know how to do something, I'm not telling you. I am you know, not telling you. That's my biggest downfall in the dark. My children tell me I talk too much. I love to share information. I love to share information. And I think someone told me the other day that the Lord told them to tell me that I'm a consultant. And if it's even she who comes to me for advice, I must charge her. And I say, you know, you're probably right because, mm -hmm. because I give so freely. He would take me for granted and he would take it yeah. for granted. I give so freely. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wait on you to ask. It's a little bit of, um, the Lord gave me a little bit of idea how to, how to, how, how to save some money. Yeah. And that's quite well. And, um, Mark, you have to be disciplined, um, to manage it, you yeah. know, but it does work. And I've proven, I mean, that it, that it does work. And mm -hmm. so, um. I will share the information. There are persons Next time when we come on, we're going to talk about it. There are some people here that say they want to be a part of it already. You can look in the chat that they're willing to hear. And we're going to see how together we can do some investments because um, Kareem does the research. And that's the thing. When I, when I used to work in um, the Forex market and we used to trade, trade euro against the dollar and the yen, you have to have like four computers and because, you know, the Japanese market is the first market open. Then you go over to London. And then the U.S. market is always the last market to open. So you have one computer with this market, one laptop with that market, one lad. And it takes the time to do the research. And when you find the people who can do the research and love to do the research and have the information, why not use their information and do your investment and your and your strategy, even okay. trading in options. I used to trade in options. <laughs> but um, huh? I, I don't want to mislead and I'm not a financial advisor. Let me I know, I know. But I used to trade in options as a strategy to make money because you want to try. The best thing to do, they said one good thing is to work for your money, but the better thing is when the money can work for you. So I used to trade in options. Those things take a lot of time. <laughs> it's a lot of time to follow every little trend, every little information. So I used to go on MSNBC and watch Kramer, Mad Money, and take Kramer advice because I don't have the time. People don't have the time, seriously. Some people don't understand and some people don't have the time to sit down and, and do the research to come up with what's the right stuff, what's the right way to go. So next time when Karine is back, she's going to put her idea that she have and it works it works for her. It's a proven 
strategy. I'm getting old. I need something to help me. Yes. All right. So we're going to um, we're going to talk about that next time. And thank you so much for being with us today. And you did do a good job. I tell you not to be worried about anything because I know you will do well because this is your area. Amen. So we'll see each other at seven o'clock, six o'clock. We're coming back to pray. And the next time she's on, she's going to share her idea. And remember, Sister Edwards will be back and she'll be talking about trust and will. Should you do trust or should you do wills? So we'll be looking at that on Thursday. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. Join us on Thursday. Amen. And remember Amen. to keep on fasting. I know a lot of people are tired now because we pray. If you follow the prayer line, you'll pray like 14, 15 hours a day. And I know it's it's getting in, in interfere with these things, but it happens like that all the time. God bless you all and see you. We'll be back on Thursday at 3 p.m. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody. God Amen. bless you. Thank you so much, Green. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.